get an amen? Hearty amen. Amen. That's good, good, good. Thank God for Jesus. I thank God for another opportunity to be before you. This never gets old for me. Amen. Amen. Some people, their sanctification gets old. Ooh, but this never gets old for me. And I, get, I give God the praise for it because the more he loves me, the more I love him. And the more I love him, the more he loves me. And so I look forward to standing before you on Sundays. Um, I want us to pray for all of the people on vacation, um, all of the ones that are sick and shed in, and all, all of the ones that are bereaved also. Um, I'm just looking forward to a high time in Jesus for the rest of the year. Yes. Isn't it amazing we're already past the middle of the year? Yes, past halfway. And so God has kept us. And I know I said uh, Sunday, a lot of you were there. I said Sunday, when you see chairs empty in a church, you can rest assured, as much as angels love to worship, they're filling the seats. Amen. 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 And so God is good. And so, listen, I'm here to talk to us about something that's very, very important. Glad to see some of you all here that I haven't seen in a while and I've been definitely praying for. Um, sicknesses are still going around. Um, so don't take it for don't take it for granted. Stay up on your vitamins. If you walk, walk. Um, if you do any type of exercise, go ahead and do it. However, take care of your bodies. Amen. Amen. Now, are you all gonna pray with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Does everybody have a Bible? Yes. All right. So in your Bible. I want you to turn to John, St. John, 1, 43. Now, I wasn't going to read all of this. However, I, I am going to read it. And I want us to uh, concentrate on verse 50. I'm, I'm going to read all of this so you get a kind of like a foundation of of what's, what's going on here. So that's John, St. John, first chapter, 43, 43rd verse, all the way through, all the way through 51. And if you have that, would you stand on your feet? First chapter of John, starting at the 43rd verse. And give me a hearty amen if you have that. Amen. Praise God. This is how it reads. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. 44 says, now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. 45 says, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 46 says, and Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Question. And Philip said to him, come and see. 47 says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit reading from the New King James Version. 
Verse 48 says, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. It goes on to say in verse 49, Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, in other words, teacher, Rabbi, are, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Now listen to this, verse 50. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And the title of this message is The Essence of Conversion. The Essence of Conversion. Amen. You may be seated. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Essence of Conversion. I know most of you all in here are converted already. However, God wants us to know as witnesses of his what the essence of conversion is. I want you to know, and God has impressed it on my heart, to definitely let everybody know that there is something that saints really need from the Lord. All right. And they really need to know what conversion is all about. Amen? Amen? And so as I stand before you, you have to be given the essence of the gospel before you can be converted. Conversion happens when God speaks to you personally and draws you. A lot of people have been drawn by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus Christ. They've been drawn, however, they're, they, they're in a state of conversion but they never come all the way through as being converted. Okay. Are you all with me? Yeah. Are you going to pray with me? Yeah. And so God is saying to us, he's telling us in so many words that he wants us to recognize who he truly is. Okay. And he truly is a God of grace. And he truly is a God of mercy. And he's a God of patience. Did we all know that? Yeah. He'll wait for you forever. Did you know that? Yeah. However, he gives us chance after chance after chance. Yeah. And he wants to save us. Now that's God's attitude. But when we're sinning, that's another thing. And God's not going to wait forever for you to sin and cause others to sin and cause others to go down. He's not going to wait for that. Uh, he'll just take his hand off of you and he'll let the devil do what he needs to do and what he wants to do. And I tell us all the time that the devil, <clears throat> his one objective <clears throat> is to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's what his objective is. Yep. He is so totally jealous of who you are, who I am, especially me as a preacher. He, he doesn't want us to go out and give God God's word and they go into a state of conversion because they're that close to being converted. 
Amen? Amen. So I want you to focus on, it doesn't take much to be saved. You have your paper out here? Okay, get your paper out because there's a couple of fill-ins on there. It doesn't take much, <clears throat> excuse me, to be saved. Uh, it doesn't take much to accept Jesus. And so the Bible tells us that he's there for us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Because he has a job for us to do. You ever take it like that? Anybody ever take it like that? He ha if you're saved, he has a job for you to do. And that's go out and make disciples. Amen? Amen. Lead people to Christianity. Tell them what it's all about. Put them in the state of conversion. Talk them into the state of conversion. And then it takes God himself to convert them. He's, he's, he's got his hands on all of us. He's keeping all of us. Nonetheless, I was telling the kids in the class this morning, nevertheless, he wants that same praise that you give everything else. Y'all with me? Is anybody going to pray for me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. God wants us to be witnesses for him. Yes, yes, yes. And he wants us to go out into the highways and hedges. I'm so glad to have Sister Chelsea here. We, we're praying, probably praying for, probably been praying for her. You know, I always send out this little text to everybody I can send it to. Praying for you when you least expect it. Amen. Any of y'all in here? I guess everybody's on vacation that I send it to. But anybody in here ever get that from me? Amen. Yeah. Because I'm praying for you a lot of times, really, when you do least expect it. And we are praying for you, Chelsea, and still going to be praying for you. Amen. And I just thank God because I can pray for people. Amen. Yes. I can tell them the truth of the word. And the Lord uh, is pleased with that. And he doesn't want us to stop. However, if you haven't been converted yet, that means that God wants you to have all of the pleasures that he has to give us while we're down here. This place is not our home as they, they line just preached. I mean, I prayed. And so... This place is not our home. We're just passing through. Yes. And so there's a, there is a essence that God wants us to have. And what that essence is that he wants us to have is that he wants us to be deep inside of his word. Amen? Amen. He wants us to understand that it takes a little work, it takes a little fortitude, heart to go out and talk to people. We had a, a clothes giveaway out there not too long ago, and that went well, very good. But we're going to go out and knock on some doors again. Um, God wants us to do that. You'd be surprised whom... God has touched, and God has called, and they have not been converted yet. And so he wants us to lead them to where he, he is. What is our motto, St. Paul Family Ministry? Say it out loud. Learn, live, and be. Learn about Christ. That's what we're doing here. Then live it. And then go out and lead somebody to Christ. That's what this is all about. Yes. And, and we can't do it one day and then don't quit and then quit. Amen? Amen? That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to make disciples. And as, you were, as we just read a, a few moments ago, when Jesus was making his disciples, he, were, he was going out. And, and this particular disciple that he... Um, that we're focusing on was Nathaniel here. 
And Jesus saw him sitting under the fig tree. In a seminary, they, they tell us that he was reading the scriptures while sitting under that fig tree. One thing about the disciples that doesn't happen today is they were always studying the Old Testament. They were always studying the word. They were always trying to find out in this time, in the Roman time, about who the Messiah truly was. Anybody in here know who the Messiah is? <clears throat> they were trying to find out who Jesus was before Jesus was here. Amen? Amen. Do we realize that? Yes. Um, do we realize that that's exactly what we're, we are supposed to do? So those men that Jesus called to be disciples, a disciple, um, with the exception of a couple of them. He had a powerful thing about his presence. Yes. People saw the light of his presence. And then when he spoke, he spoke eloquently. Nonetheless, he spoke of the times where people can understand. He spoke power. One of the other things that he spoke was life. Another thing that he spoke was peace. And above all of them, he spoke love. Even when he whooped them out of the temple, he did it in love. And so God is speaking to us today, and he wants to speak to us in love. And let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is... People don't acknowledge spirituality. And then another thing that they don't acknowledge, they don't accept spirituality. And God has given me this to give us today. Two things we got to know. We've got to acknowledge, acknowledge spirituality, and then we have to accept spirituality. So when we go out to witness to folks, that's the two things that should be on our mind. Do they acknowledge spirituality? Um, what kind of aura are, there, are they giving out when you, when you find out, when they find out that you're not a Jehovah Witness at the door? What kind of attitude do they have? Do they respond in peace? Do they respond with questions? How, how do they respond? I've find, found out since I've been a pastor, we have more people that want to hear the truth than don't. Amen. If you say you're not a, a Jehovah's Witness, most of the time they stand at the door and listen to you. Because you're giving out the light that Jesus gives out. Yes. You're giving out the peace that Jesus gives out. You're giving out the the joy that Jesus gives out, and above all, you're giving the love that Jesus gives. Amen. And that's what man is looking for. Oh, all my amen people are gone. Amen. Somebody got to say amen. amen. So praise God. I want us to understand, when you talk to someone about Jesus, do they acknowledge the spirituality? Yes. Let me say uh, some other things in this. Have they seen you before in another setting? Yes. And what's coming out of your mouth is not what lines up with the other place they saw you at. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So, acknowledge spirituality. John the Baptist was acknowledging spirituality in John 1, 34 through 36. When he saw Jesus coming, Jesus hadn't been baptized, but he was coming. And John said these words, and I have seen and testified. This is John 1, 34 through 36. I have seen and testified that this is the son of God. Everybody say the son of God. Now, this is going to be you be hearing this phrase through this message. 
And then it says in verse 35, again, the next day, John stood with two disciples beside him. This is John the Baptist. And looking at Jesus, as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Everybody say, Behold the Lamb of God. Almost like saying the Son of God. So look at your paper. There's a fill-in on your paper. And it says, We've got to recognize... The Son of God. We've got to recognize the Son of God. When we speak to people, we have to recognize who we are. We have to remember who we are. We have to remember that God the Father is working through God the Son, yes, yes. who's working to you and through you. Yes. Amen? Amen. So we've got to understand that, listen, I'm out here trying to make a soul or trying to lead a soul to Christ, trying to uh, pull someone into conversion. And if I can pull them into conversion, then maybe they can recognize who the son of God is. Maybe they can go towards that light that we carry. Maybe they may want to know what that peace is that we're all about. Maybe they want to know the joy that comes up out of us when we talk to other people. Yes. Amen? Amen? Maybe God just wants you to, 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 to witness to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe he just wants you to talk to them. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about the goodness of his grace? Have you thought about he's given you an opportunity to do the, the best thing that you could possibly do is lead someone to Christ? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, have you thought about, as John was looking right here, have you thought about you being like John the Baptist was? Mm. Can see a, a, a soul coming. That's, that's what he was seeing with all the when they, all the people were being baptized. But when he saw Jesus, he said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. Yes. I'm not worthy to lace up your shoes. I'm not worthy. But the Lord said, let it be so. He was baptized just like us. And the moment he was baptized, do you know the heavens opened up and a dove came down and lit on his shoulder and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. If I would have saw that, and he's still, saying, he's still saying the same thing. God is saying out of heaven, heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, except ye him. Accept him. Accept him. Yes. Let him fill you with his spirit. Mm -hmm. All the time when you're reading the Bible, you see God it will give us the gift yes. of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you, you all that read your Bibles, I don't know if you, have you, have you thought about the gift of the Holy Spirit? What's in that gift? You know, I always say it's a gift inside of a gift inside of a gift, and I can keep going. That's because it's the power of the Holy Spirit, the goodness of God, the grace of God the love of God, the kindness of God, yes. the joy of God, the understanding of God. Yes. All of it comes through from God, through Jesus, to you mm -hmm. to give to someone else. Amen? Amen? That's the power that the Lamb of God has. That's the power that the Son of God has. So I've got to recognize that as being not a preacher, but as being a disciple of Christ. And so God understands that, and he made the plan just for us. Now, don't let me go to the negative, because I could go there. People don't want to, they don't want to knock on doors. They don't want to go out. But God says, that's what I need you to do. Go out into the highways and the hedges. Anybody heard that voice before, that verse before? 
go out into the highways and the hedges and compel men. Yes. In other words, tell them that they, they need a savior. They need a, a, someone that will watch over them, someone that will keep them, some that, someone that will keep them in the realm of peace. Mm -hmm. How do you have peace in this place? How do you have peace in this place? I can tell you it's Jesus. Amen. It all comes through Jesus. You're going you, you to let me just talk to you a minute? Mm -hmm. Because he is the one. Listen to Acts 2.36. 2.36 through 42. It says, in fact, let, let's turn there. Let's, let's all turn to Acts 2.36. Deacon Obi, uh, Obi, can you... Um, can you read that for me? Acts 2.36. It's not going to go through all the way on the screen. I want, to look at, I want us to look at it. See it in the Bible for yourself because we're going to go through these scriptures. Acts 2.36. Yes, hold on one sec. Okay, start out and just just take your time and read that. You got which one you're reading? King James? Yes, Good. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Let me tell you what's happening here. Keep keep your spot, oh, because you're gonna be reading in a minute. After the Passover. Everybody with me? After the Passover, this was the last day. And this was the day that the children of Israel, Jesus told them uh, to go and tarry for the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he said, tarry for that. In other words, that word means to wait for that. Just wait on the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus told that, them that as he was ascending into heaven. Yes. So he said, wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, wait for the power that I'm going to give you mm -hmm. so you can witness to men. Yes. Go, go ahead, Obi. 37. Verse 37. Now when they had heard this, they were crippled in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, Okay, hold it right there. Once they went to that upper room and, the, and, and they prayed and they were waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, people don't have to give you a gift, amen? That's right. they, they don't have to give you a gift. But a gift is free, isn't it? Yes. They may have paid for it. However, that gift, is being given to you and you didn't have to pay for it. So they were waiting on the gift and they were praying and they were waiting and they were praying. And that was at the end of the Passover, the very last day. And the power of the Holy Ghost came down as, as fire and lit on their heads yes. as tongues of fire. And as those tongues of fire came and lit on their heads, they spoke in other tongues. They spoke other languages. And the power was the languages of the people that were all outside. Right, right, right. And it caught their attention. Mm -hmm. it caught, he said, and the people outside said, these are men of Galilee. I'm, I'm hearing them in my own language. And you know that the devil had to come in, right? And so the first thing somebody came up with, oh, they drunk. Mm -hmm. And Peter heard it. And he said, they're not drunk as you suppose. This is not the drunk that you think it is. They, they, they were saying this is 9 o'clock in the morning. They drunk already? And, and what was so big about this, at that time, Peter started preaching. Yes. And when Peter started preaching... He preached that message, and the Bible says, as he preached, as Obi just read, they were cut to their heart.
because they were the ones that crucified Jesus. They were in the group that was spitting on him and throwing rocks at him. They were, they were the ones that were downing him as he was carrying the cross up Golgotha's hill. They were the ones that didn't believe that he was the Messiah. He was God himself. He was the son of God. He, they didn't believe that when he got up from the grave, all power was in his hands. But it came through the Holy Ghost that sat down upon them. And, and uh, uh, upon them, they, listen, they were in converting or in conversion, but they hadn't been converted. Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. And so, Obi, where'd you leave off? I don't want to mess you up there, man. 38, 38 go ahead. Uh huh. Go ahead. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The what? The Holy Ghost. The what? The, gift. the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead with thirty nine. Thirty nine. For the promise is unto you, mm -hmm. to the children, and to all that are far off. Amen. As the Lord our God shall call. Right. Go ahead. Man, hold it right there. Did you all hear that exhort word mm -hmm. that I gave last week? Exhort. It says he's going to exhort. This is exhorting you. Uh, and with many other words. In other words, Peter was preaching. And not to belong this, but it says with many other words, then those who gladly received it, his word were baptized, yeah. and that day about 3,000 people were converted. Yeah. They were converted after the, after the conversion. And so what, what God is wanting us to do as people of God is go out and make disciples. In other words, teach them how conversion happens mm -hmm. and then bring them in to be converted and be baptized. Yes. And that's how we make disciples. So what I'm telling us is God has a work for us to do. We just have to step out and do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the Lord is a powerful God. He's not going to leave you hanging. Yes. He's not just going to leave you, but he's going to give you what you need right. when you go out and when you tell people about Jesus. Amen. A lot of times people get scared. Mm -hmm. They hear the word. They accept the word. And when they accept the word, um, sometimes they take it, sometimes they don't. I'm going to go into a different part. So look at your paper. We are living testimonies. That's the second fill in. We are living testimonies of our Heavenly Father. So now that you know how to acknowledge spirituality on your part and watching the person that you're um, speaking to, you have to be praying as a saved person. Listen closely, everybody. You have to be praying so they can accept spirituality. Now, that is a big problem because people run from spirituality. Can't get an amen, I guess. Amen. People run from spirituality. Oh, I can go for and say, say folks run from spirituality. They don't want to be spiritual. They, they just don't want to be. It's not popular to them. However, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the power, it's the power of all powers. It comes from God himself. Mm -hmm. he, sets, he set down on those people's head. And when you're converted, that power, that Holy Ghost power and fire sets down upon you. Yes. 
And if you stay with it, if you grab a church, join a church, whatever you do, wherever you join and stay, be steadfast and learn, then you can walk in power. Yes. You know why people can't have so many problems? They can't rebuke the devil and tell the devil to get away. Because the Bible teaches you if you resist the devil, he'll flee. He got to go. You know why? Because the power is there. The light is there. The fire is there. And he, he is afraid, totally afraid of the power of Jesus Christ. Some people think that the some people think it was a war in heaven. No, it was not a war in heaven. God just spoke the word and Satan was gone. That's how much power he has. And so we've got to understand how much power we can have. It's the same power. It's the same power that we're going to have to use when we get out of the grave. The power of Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost to rise from the dead. That's what this is all about. It's the essence. That's the essence in conversion. <clears throat> the essence that's in conversion. How am I going to be converted if I'm not in the spirituality? How can I be in the spirituality if I don't believe the spirituality? How can I get the essence of the spirituality if I don't go to church? How can I trust God, love God, and talk to God and call on God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my spirit if I don't have the essence of Jesus Christ? Yes, yes, this yes. is what this is all about. Yes. It, don't just come to church, go home, come to church, go home, and when you get a problem, come running to the pastor to pray. No, don't do that. Be able to pray on your own. And if it gets worse than that, then come to the pastor. That's what we're supposed to do. It says, come to the elders. James says, come to the elders of the church when you got a situation, a big situation that you can handle, that you might be afraid of. Listen, you got power, saints. You have power. And that conversion power is great power. Amen. So acknowledge spirituality, and this is what happens when you accept spirituality. And this is when Jesus was with Peter out on the boat. And Jesus told them he had preached a great message. Yes. Two-day message, believe it or not. <laughs> and then as they were leaving, Jesus had fed them. 5,000 on, on one occasion, 4,000 on another occasion. Y'all ever thought about what happened to the other 1,000? 5,000 on one occasion, that was the first day. 4,000 on the, on the next occasion. Do you, know, you ever thought about what happened to the other 1,000? Anybody? That's the work of the devil. That's what it is. And that just goes to show you that a lot of people are not going to accept the essence of conversion. They're not going to accept spirituality. And Jesus does not expect you to get everybody. But he expects us to do something. Amen? And after he got through that, with that message, he told the disciples to go on. They got on the boat, and they thought they were going to get to the other side, all right. And they didn't go around the walking way because it was so long, and it was in the evening already. They didn't want to walk at night, so they grabbed the boat, jumped on the boat, and they started to go across. And a storm came over. And as the storm came over, the waters got real rough. And they were rowing like mad, trying to just row, and they were going nowhere. And, and, and they were wondering if they were going to perish. And all of a sudden, something out on the water, it was a, as the lightning was flashing, it was a silhouette out on the water. And the silhouette looked like somebody. And as it got closer, it, it looks like somebody. And as it got closer, 
they, they saw that it was Jesus walking on the water. And as Jesus walked on the water, Peter was looking and, and Jesus said, it's I. And, G, and, and Peter, as, as his personality always led him, was to speak out first. He said, if, if you are the master, bid me to come out and walk on the water with you. And he said, come on. come on. And he got out on the water. Yes. And he started walking yes. on, the water. on the water with his eyes on Jesus. Yes. He said, good, come on, come on. And then the winds start coming up. And the waves start getting big. The lightning was loud. You all have heard these stories. I heard them and not only were they getting loud, they were getting bigger. And Peter started looking around. And that was the problem. When he started looking around, he started sinking. And don't you know that's the way we are? We start looking at the bills. We start looking at the job, the problems on the job. We start looking at um, all of our problems that we're, we're having. We start looking at our kids and our family, our husbands, our wives. We start looking at everything else but Jesus. And as he walked on the water, he started sinking. And he screamed, help me, Lord. And as he was going down, almost under, the Lord grabbed him by the hand. He said, oh, ye of little faith, why? Why did you, why did you get distracted? I'm asking the question to us right now. Why do we get distracted with all of the problems that we have? When we can pray with our faith and ask God for anything. That's right. That's right. And as he was walking here, as he was going along, and they walked back to the water, they got on the boat, back on the boat. And as God said to them, O oh, ye of little faith. And when they got on the boat, the wind ceased. Just like that. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped Jesus. And here's that phrase again. It says, truly, you are the Son of God. That's Mark, uh, that's uh, Matthew 14 and 33. You are the Son of God. And then Mark goes on to say, he says it like this. Mark 4, 10 through 12, it says, And as soon as he was alone, those who were around him, the 12, the 12 apostles, they began to ask questions. Lord, who are you? They couldn't believe who he was, although they said who he was. You're the son of God. And the problem was they had a crisis of belief. And every time we have a crisis of belief, when it comes to Jesus, we start to sink. We start to have problems. We start to get stressed. We start to get depressed. We start worrying. Yes. We start going through all of these mental jogging and mental basketball games and all these. The devil is just playing havoc with our minds. And God is saying, trust me when you can't trace me. Have faith in me when you can't find me. He's saying, I love you with all my heart, but what are you going to do? Are you going to keep going on not trusting me? Are you going to keep going on suffering and not realizing who it is and where it comes from? And he says to us, listen, it's not hard to accept me. It's not hard to be mine. And, and let me just give you this one more point in this point. And he said to them, to you has been entrusted the mystery of the kingdom of God. God has given us the mystery of who his kingdom is. And then he said to, 
to us in his word. A lot of things he kept for just us to know and understand and take in our hearts and hold it. And not only hold it, but then when we go out, we tell others about the spirituality. God is amazing. He's patient. He's long-suffering. All of the things that Jesus went through, we're going to go through. However, just keep it in your mind that you have the essence of conversion. You've been converted. You have the essence of conversion. And the essence of conversion is converted. Amen? Amen. How many people in the building is converted? I don't know. Don't be afraid of the Lord. Don't be scared of the Lord. That's your only hope. Amen? Amen? God bless you and God keep you. There may be somebody in the building who has not trusted the Lord. Maybe that person has not given the their heart to be converted. Maybe you've never been baptized. I don't know what the situation may be, but if that is you, the Lord is speaking to you today. He is like this. He says, you're an amazing God. And I want you to know how much I love you. And how much I want to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he will save you. And yes, the moment you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, the Bible says in Romans 1.18 that we suppress the Holy Spirit. So we have to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Amen? So if there's one in the building that wants to accept Christ as their person personal Savior. Now is your opportunity. Is there one that may come and trust God for the power of the Holy Spirit? That essence, that essence that I've been talking about is the crux, the empowerment, the grace, and the mercy that holds all of this together. Who is Jesus Christ? Is there one in the building that wants to belong to Jesus Christ? He wants us not to make a 360 degree turn. He wants us to make a 180. Not going back to what we were make a 180 and come to him and as we come to him we don't stop there we can keep getting stronger and stronger everybody in the building knows what sin is and if you've been doing anything sinful then you need to make it right with the Lord amen is there anyone in the building that's willing to make it right with the Lord. I talked to many people, guys and girls and young men, young women, and they always say that they love the Lord. However, they never pay him back for what he's done for them. And one of the major things telling the kids this morning because he woke us up this morning and he's been waking us up every day every day into our lives here we are but he is appreciating you right now he's appreciating you right now for coming to church amen praise God amen God is good God is good you can still come as I'm walking over. God is amazing.
Lord, you know the request more than anything. So, Lord, I ask that you would grant these requests that people would be your will. You're a God of goodness, a God of mercy, a God of grace. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you send the power of the Holy Spirit down. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Lord, give them peace in their hearts. Not only peace, but mercy and kindness, love and joy. Lord, I ask that you give yourself to them. Lord, you're a mighty God, a good God, a gracious God. And you're the God above all God. So, Lord, as they stand before you, Lord, ask that they would dedicate their lives to you. And, Lord, I know that you're a God of your word. We trust it and we believe it. We ask in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Amaria and how she's been so faithful to the church. Keep her, Lord. Touch her family. Touch her other grandmother, Lord. Touch her, uh, her auntie. Sister Brenda and Sister Pat. Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. We know that you're a great God. So we pray this prayer with all faith, trusting in you and not doubting. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? <laughs> God is good, isn't he? Amen, amen. God is great. He's a wonderful God. And listen, we thank God for each and every one of you today. Uh, I ask that you pray for the ones that's on vacation. Unfortunately, I've got to apologize for our deacons. One had to work three days, and his wife is here. I thank God for her. Um, some of them are on vacation. They didn't plan for it to be this way, but all of them were the same time. But good, good. Do you know Jesus, went, he, he stole away and prayed a lot of times, and they didn't know where he was. Um, and if we don't take time and rest, look who's talking. If we don't take time and rest, we can't fulfill our duties, right? So glad to see so many of you here. Thank God for each and every one of you. Everybody stand to your feet. As we get ready to leave, listen, we're in a time where you got to watch your back. Amen? Have your head on a swivel, as they say. But the best shield that you can ask for is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it's free. You never know what's going to happen. Isn't it amazing how that stray bullet grazed one person and killed the next? You know what I'm talking about. You all that don't know, since the blow was driving down the street, somebody shot through her car. But she's still here. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. So keep in mind who you belong to. Amen. Father in heaven, as we get ready to take our leave, Lord, we ask that you watch over us, that you keep us in your care, Lord Jesus. Not only that you keep us in your care, but that you uh, encamp your angels around us, Lord Jesus. As we drive down the highways and the streets, we ask in the name of Jesus that you go before us. Lord, I ask that you bring us back at the appointed time. Lord, you're a great God and a loving God. We thank you for everybody in the building and ask in the name of Jesus that you touch them from the crown of, your head, crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We ask that in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen.